Who here has something that feels heavy and dull and wretched, some kind of painful thing that they would love to transform into a golden, loving, happy? Everybody, come on. I know y'all. Yeah, okay, good. Me too, right? So what we're going to do today is use the essence of love itself to purify and transmute the pain that's living inside your mind, your heart, or your body, or some combination of those things. And I thought I'd give you some of the, the background of this. You know, I was looking at the Philosopher's Stone. How many people have heard of the Philosopher's Stone, right? So this is the magical thing that you take a little bit of and you add it and then it transmutes everything and you can use as much as you want and it replenishes itself and it's supposed to give you immortality and give you the elixir of life and, and whatever you put a little shaving of this substance into it, it's going to transform it. So, I look deeper into that. The Philosopher's Stone. Philo comes from the Greek word meaning love. The kind of love that's human to human love, not romantic love, but humanitarian love. It's the kind of love that means that I care about what happens to you because what happens to you affects me and affects the rest of us. It's the kind of love that has a base in the awareness that we are a group organism. The kind of love that children have for each other like that, right off the bat. That when one little toddler falls down, the other little toddlers rush over to see if they can kiss their boo-boo or start crying because their friend's crying because they care and they understand that we're a part of the same vibrational field, right? So that's where philo comes from. And the Sophia part, philosophy, comes from the Sophia meaning wisdom. What is wisdom? In my experience, wisdom is something that is true and known, put into action. So the difference between knowledge and wisdom is that wisdom is something that you actually take a positive, doable step into and that you you concretize it by living it. Not just collecting esoteric knowledge in the dusty library of your home, in the dusty library of your esoteric mind, but that you actually apply what you've learned in your body, in your heart, with your mouth, with your physical steps on this planet. So philo suffer, philosophy is knowing that the bedrock of existence is that we are one and doing something with that knowledge in a practical, meaningful sense of it on a regular basis. So there's your philosopher's stone. And what's, why, why stone? Why didn't they call it this the philosopher's trick or box or wiggy wag? Because we use the word stone to connotate something as, that's a bedrock, that's foundational, that's permanent, as an etched-in stone. The longest lasting substance on this earth, it lasts, the rocks last longer than anything. So they're saying this is the permanent peace, which is love incarnated into action. And when you put that into whatever you're doing, or whatever you're fearing, or whatever you're feeling, or whatever you're cooking, it's going to make it better. And there's an unlimited resource of this. A little bit transforms everything. And in as much as you take, there's an infinite supply available to all of us. So based in that ancient truth, we're going to take the Philosopher's Stone and we're going to add it to the crucible of ourselves today, to the cauldron of our own being. And bring it directly through the electrical system of our bodies into the neural network where we've stored the pain and the memories and the anguish of the past. And watch what happens when we add those three things together. We take the action, we bring in the love, and we stir it together with our intention. And it's going to physically technically transform you. It's going to create chemistry that's released by your hypothalamus in the top of your brain 
in 0.5 seconds, it's going to start flooding your bloodstream with energy and chemistry that floods through your whole bloodstream and goes and talks to all your cells to tell your cells how to behave. See, they've recently found out in science that your cells aren't controlled by the DNA. Your physical living experience is not a genetic hand-me-down that you do nothing about. Too bad, it's my bad genes. That's outdated now. Come sit closer with us so that I can really see you and feel you. Your DNA is listening to the membrane of the cell to find out how to replicate, what to replicate, and what's appropriate to the living situation external to the cell. And it's counting on the blood supply to tell the cell how to behave. And when the cell membrane has the certain chemistry touching the outside of it, it unlocks these little receptor sites. And the receptor sites are like little antennas that send signals into the DNA. The DNA has a protein sheath across it, like a long pillowcase. And when the right information gets in, that protein sheath separates. And the DNA strand clicks on and off. The different pairings of DNA turn on and off according to what your version of reality is telling it. Not just the substances that you've eaten, but most importantly, the thoughts that you're thinking, your subconscious <clears throat> belief system, and what you believe is possible and impossible. So your experience of even what you think is your permanent reality, because it's my body, is a very flexible process, and it's changing according to what you tell it. So that sounds great, except for who, who here tells yourself other than loving things on a regular basis, maybe even today? <laughs> Occasionally? Good. So, how do you control that? Have you ever tried to tell yourself to stop thinking that? Uh, it didn't work. <laughs> for a few minutes, and I came back and said maybe even meaner stuff to you. Okay, so then that's the question. Okay, so if I know that my thoughts are creating the reality of my body, and my body's creating a damaged experience, it's creating a lump in the back of my heart, or it's creating clogged arteries, or it's creating indigestion, or it's creating muscle tension, or bone pain, or heaven forbid, even disease, then how do I change my thoughts instead of just like, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, right? The other voice goes, no, you can't, no, you can't, no, you can't, right? So how do I get that voice out of my head? Because it's creating an actual chemical compound that creates physical suffering and emotional suffering. It cre creates anxiety, depression, and physical illness. So I'm going to share with you that process today. And luckily, you don't need to buy anything. You don't need to plug anything in. You don't need to go home and cook it up in your kitchen and distill it and take one little drop at a time in a special dosage. You don't need to change your diet unless your inner guidance is telling you that now you have to change your diet. You don't even need to do special new yoga postures. All you need to do is access what that corrupt file in your brain is telling you. And get honest with yourself for a few minutes. So they say the truth will set you free and that love heals everything. They were right. It's built in. Isn't that lucky? Yeah. Yeah.